It has come to be thought of as one of the most elusive accomplishments in all of sports. The Minneapolis Lakers of George Mikan achieved it when the league was young. The Celtics of Cousy and Russell did it as part of the greatest dynasty in NBA history. But for 27 years, no other team reached this almost mythical goal. Fatigue, injury, and the ravages of time have crushed the dreams of many great teams who've undertaken this treacherous quest. But with two hard-won championship banners giving testament to their determination and resolve, the Bulls prepared to be different. For them, the 1993 season was the culmination of a three-year odyssey and a personal journey to their place in history. There's a couple things I want to say about the season. For us to win a third championship is uh, you know, not even worth talking about at this time because it's a journey that begins with a single step, this thousand mile journey. You've got to remember that each game is that step that you take along the way. And for us to do this again, we're going to have to take each one of these steps and match them and meet the challenge that each one brings. The Bulls would begin the season with Coach Phil Jackson's advice firmly in mind, but they would find it far more difficult to follow than they imagined. Jordan on the drive and it's stripped away by... It's tough. It's just tough to get ourselves the mental frame of starting fresh. You know, we just went through this. We got to go through it again. And I think that hindered the way we started the season. Scotty Pippen against Willis. Lost the handle at it. Kevin Willis picks it up. A disappointing opening <laughs> night here in Chicago. We started out with a lot of guys not healthy. And a lot of guys, speaking as myself and Michael, not really ready for the season to come so quickly. The physically and mentally fatigued Bulls suddenly found themselves stripped of their aura of invincibility. And for the first time in years, struggling for victories. We kind of felt like we were getting that, you know, the respect was, was gone. We're no longer the, the world champion Chicago Bulls teams in fierce when we played, and they felt like they could beat us. And our teams are going to take advantage of a, a, a dog who may be hurt. You know, the Wolves are not going to, you know, let you go. But although the Bulls seemed uncommonly vulnerable on the court, in their hearts, they knew otherwise. We were just kind of going through the season. Uh, you know, we weren't playing as well as we thought, but we, it really didn't concern us. The one thing we never had was doubt, because it seemed like every time the challenge, you know, came about, you know, we answered. Though they may not have dominated opponents, as in years past, the Bulls rose to the occasion when they needed to most. Pass Grant, no! Grant the rebound! Scotty! When the game was on the line, their championship medal showed through. Found the card right to Jordan, time winding down, Michael for three. Yeah! Yeah! A winner! When we saw that we were in a bind and we needed to excel or bring our game back up to the level that we have just finished playing for the last two years, uh, we were able to do that. Challenging 
We knew that we were far from the same team that finished the year before. But on the other hand, we, we felt like that uh, we could play well enough that we could uh, be competitive in every single ball game. And as it turned out, why we uh, won our fair share, I think. <laughs> when the season finally drew to a close, the Bulls owned the league's third best record. And though they had not compiled nearly as many wins as the year before, they had found something else that would prove to be far more meaningful in the postseason to come. We got to a point where we said we've lifted the level of our game up, we've lifted our intensity level up. We didn't get over that hump and win the, the conference best season record, but we got to the point where we got to believe in ourselves, and I think that's something that we felt very good about. Our enthusiasm for the game was back, our energy, all of our players was back healthy, and everything was there. We just needed to bring it to the court and perform. The Bulls had managed to hit their stride at exactly the right time. The world champs beginning their quest to three-peat this evening as they open a best-of-five series against Atlanta. Let's have a good ball game. And as they welcomed the Atlanta Hawks to Chicago Stadium for the first round of the playoffs, the Bulls prepared to give them an unexpectedly rude reception. The Bulls are flying! We came out and we played great defense. We played defense uh, like the Bulls of old. After shutting the Hawks down, the Bulls simply stampeded over them. When this team came out against Atlanta, there was a new intensity. Everybody was fired up. Buyers were getting thrown out of the paint. People were playing good, hard, aggressive defense, taking the ball to the basket. It was like, this is a team on a mission. Find Scott Williams, makes the fake, takes it to the... Oh! Yeah, you said it, Scott. He loves it. Oh, there's... Oh! Play it again! Time running down. We just knew that it, this was just playoff. I mean, we went through an 82-game season just to get to this. So that we got a whole new attitude, and we started playing a whole lot better. We started playing like the team that you know, won back-to-back -back championships. Runs into a double team, oh, and carelessly throws it away. Yeah. The behind-the-back jam from Scotty Pippen, and that puts the period on the full sweep of the Hawks and the end of the season for Atlanta. With the Hawks behind them, the Bulls greeted next a familiar playoff foe. Well, if it's May in Chicago, it must mean that the Bulls and Cavs are about set to go in yet another seven-game playoff war. All season long, their whole main focus was to beat the Bulls in the playoffs because of what we had done to them in years past. And, uh, you know, the acquisition of Gerald Wilkins was supposed to be kind of the final piece of the puzzle. Cleveland, in the offseason, brought in Gerald Wilkins to be the Jordan stopper. I'm looking forward to it, no question about it. Um, I think the number one thing is that it's my job to go out and put the job on him to shut him down, keep his numbers down. But as the Cavaliers would quickly find, stopping Jordan is not a one-man job. Pippen on top as Jordan's trying to post up. Oh, Michael with a beautiful fake. Oh, man! What a fake by Jordan! I wanted to prove to them that, hey, no matter what you do, what changes you make, I'm overcome that challenge. Trying to go inside, Michael spins, it's got oh, yeah! What a shot by Michael! Michael is talking to the crowd. And Michael looks over at us and said, he can't guard me. He can't guard me. Jordan. Michael to finish. See, this is what Michael lived for. He, he wanted this challenge. So much for Gerald, and I'm going to shut Michael down. The Jordan stopper had a tough time tonight. Uh, he's going to be ready to come back the next, uh, next game, but so am I. Following Jordan's lead, the Bulls would continue to overwhelm the helpless Cavaliers. Pippen throws 
easily taking the next two games. Look at this Chicago defense. The double team of Grant and Jordan to steal. B.J. Armstrong, Jordan. It's three on three. Michael Pippen reverse. Grant What an effort by Grant. This Cleveland team appears to be sleepwalking here today. The series' only drama would come in game four. There's no tomorrow for the Cavaliers. It's win or the season endeth on the spot. With time running down, the Cavs would make one last stand to try to avoid a humiliating sweep and then works between a double team to the line, feeds it off to the left side, Wilkins a three in the air, go! Trailing by one with 18 seconds to go, the Bulls sense that a familiar scene was unfolding. Man, everybody in the building knows who's gonna take this shot. Michael's our go-to guy. Anytime a situation's like that, you know, everybody in the gym knows he's gonna get the ball. Crush time, winning time, it's usually George time. He was the first option. And the second option, if possible. If I'm Cleveland, though, I'm going to make someone other than Michael beat me. My mind starts to think about all the other winning shots that I've made. And here we are in Cleveland again. You know, same scenario in a sense. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! Set the Cleveland Cavaliers! Michael Jordan! Once I stepped on the court, I had total confidence that I was going to make the shot. Up to Michael. Six, five, four. Michael Strip got it back. Three, two. Michael falls, fires. Yeah! Oh! Dance it again! I've seen him do a lot of things, but uh, that, one, that one shot was just something incredible as a teammate, uh, as a player, probably as a fan. It was a nice moment in, uh, you know, in Bulls history. Michael right over Wilkins and in his face. And the Bulls have swept the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, it was like time stopped for a, a few minutes uh, to let the ball just soar through the air. And you know, once it went in, it was like, ah, now we can go to the next round. The Bulls had made short work of their first two playoff opponents. But they knew that the Eastern Conference Finals would be different. Because in this long-awaited series, they would be pitted against their most bitter adversary. In last year's playoffs, the New York Knicks had physically punished the Bulls. Kevin Hall, he is ripped by Starks. And pushed the defending champions to the brink of elimination. Can handle here by the New York Knicks. Strengthened by carefully planned off-season acquisitions and made bold by the possession of the home court advantage, the Knicks again took aim at Chicago's crown. The anticipation been there all year long, and uh, we understand that in order for us to get into a championship, that we have to go through Chicago, and uh, we understand come Sunday it's going to be all out war. Uh, we knew New York would, would take us to our limit. So it was a mental test, as well as a physical test, to take on the baddest and the worst, and probably the best challenge that we would have in the playoffs. From the moment Chicago stepped out onto Madison Square Garden's floor, New York hounded their every move. Oh, rejected by Ewing. Jordan changed his mind and rivers right there. For New York's vaunted defense, Michael Jordan was the ultimate test. And John Starks would step up and accept the challenge. Or uh, is he read MJ real well? He has studied films on Michael Jordan because he's playing better than I've ever seen anybody play. Jordan high on the right side. Turns, there's a quick jumper. And he put up a ball. <laughs> the Knicks are flat out playing Chicago at both ends right now. With Starks containing Jordan, the Knicks gained confidence with every play. Starks for three. And for the series' first two games, they battered the Bulls with ferocious intensity. 
Oakley misses the tip, gets his own rebound, the follow is good. Oakley with reckless abandon that time underneath their right side. Mason trying to do it off the dribble. And he threw the foul. It counts! The basket counts and the foul! Fittingly, it was Starks who would close out game two and emphatically stake New York to a 2-0 series lead. Starks goes baseline, Woo! and boom! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness. oh what a play by Starks! <laughs> Starks with the spark! That play should just about finish off the pool. Well, we're concerned. Well, there's no doubt about that, but, uh, you know, they're playing their style of game on their home floor. They're not going to play that style of ball game on our floor. The Bulls have come back from one down, but have never had to come back in their two-year dominance, trailing two games to none in a series. After those first two games, they really started getting real cocky and thought they were going to sweep us, and this was the time to do it, and we had another thing in store for them. I think we left New York saying, let's use Chicago as the springboard, and let's make them pay a price in Chicago. And the price was, don't let them out with a win. No matter what happens, we have to take them both times. Racing out to an early lead, the Bulls made sure that this critical game would be played on their terms. Using their quickness to frustrate the Knicks, the Bulls never let them into the contest. The Knicks way out of sync. I think the Bulls have got them in their pocket real early. Pippen now drives to the basket. Changes, put it up and in with a bank shot, running into the left side with the right hand. I think game three was probably the, the key game of that series. We never felt we were out of control after that, that game three, even though we were down 2-1. Felt we were in control. With their series lead cut in half, the Knicks look to reassert their dominance in game four. But they would be too late. The Bulls had been ignited, and even more ominously, Michael Jordan was about to be unleashed. Michael Jordan off to a good start, showing signs. Held down by the Knicks through the first three games of the series, Jordan would be shackled no longer. Michael firing over and scores! Michael back to the deck, knocked it down for three. Winning by two. Jordan tongue dangling, hang, pump, score! He just looks like he might be unstoppable. Right, Thanks for return pass, fires another three. Why not? He's unconscious today! When Jordan's onslaught was complete, he had scorched the Knicks for 54 points and even the series at two. But any celebration in Chicago was tempered by the fact that game five would be played in New York, where the Knicks showed supreme confidence in their ability to defend their home court. You know, going into that game, they won like 27, 28 games in a row at home. And the way they acted was, you know, we couldn't beat them on their floor. But the Bulls countered with confidence of their own. Well, the feeling was that we, we can win. And there was no doubt. Uh, wasn't much said. Uh, we never came out and said, well, we're going to beat them. I think it was just uh, a feeling that we had we could beat them in game five. Feeding off their success in Chicago, the Bulls burst quickly out of the gate. The Bulls on the run. Served up at John Starks. But doggedly, the Knicks kept pace. Here's Starks to the hoop. Rivers handles it. Long lead pass out of Oakley. Well, and it's Thunder Slam. I'm telling you, this is like a heavyweight championship fight. With control of the series at stake, both teams played with furious intensity, and neither was getting ground. What's the law? What's the law? The alley oop to perfection. Shot clock at seven. Ewing again. With time dwindling, Chicago would look to take the lead with one bold stroke. Knicks for the one-point lead. 
Jordan gets the pick for Grant. Armstrong, yes, a three-pointer for B.J. Armstrong. Clinging to a one-point advantage, the Bulls saw their task clearly, stopped the Knicks, and the game was theirs. So it has come down to this. All series long, the Knicks' defense had occupied the spotlight. Now, the Bulls would test their own defense with the game on the line. Ewing out to set a pick. Here's Starks, changed his mind. Plenty of time on the shot clock, down to 10. Ewing for Smith. Smith. Strip, Smith. Stop, Smith. Stopped again by Pippen. What a play by Scotty Pippen. Final seconds, Jordan for Armstrong. And the Bulls have defeated the Knicks. The Chicago Bulls with a couple of spectacular plays. Scotty Pippen stopping Charles Smith. And now the Bulls can win it all. They can close out the Knicks in game six at the Chicago Stadium. You felt the air go out of Madison Square Garden as we ran off the floor. And I'm sure there were quite a few people in that building thinking this is the last time we're going to see this New York Nick team this year. As they triumphantly return home, a loose Bulls team looked to finish the series while the once confident Knicks had lost their swagger. between Rivers and Stark. Baseline, great feet. Reverse left by Grant. Calls in and he's fouled. Man, oh man, oh man. The Bulls are a roll. The Knicks lost their confidence. You know, we felt. And it was us to go ahead and put that nail in the coffin here in Chicago. Shot clock at four. Here's Pippen for three. Yes! Again, Scotty Pippen has hit the big shot. I think the most special part about it was really us being chosen as the underdogs, and we was over, able to overcome that. And Grant on the drive, he's fouled, he counts! It's all back, and it's all over in New York. Last 15 years, 106 teams have been down 0-2. Three have come back to win the series, make it four. The Chicago Bulls, that's the court, concludes matters. And it is Chicago going on to the end. Our arch rivals, um, a team that was supposed to beat us and we hadn't been uh, predicted to get back to the finals. Um, those are the things, those special feelings that you had. You know, it's kind of like a championship, but not quite. The Bulls had made it back to the finals, and the last obstacle to their bid to three-peat awaited them here in Phoenix. Win the Bulls! We can do it! Come on, Suns fans, let's get crazy. Beat the cows, beat the cows. The Suns held the NBA's best record. They possessed its most valuable player. Charles's teammates are bowing down to him in series. And all season long, they had been hailed as a team of destiny. Comes to Miley, a long three. He got it, he got it, the Suns win. Now they happily bask in the excitement of opening a championship series at home for the very first time. This is the loosest team I've ever been around and have seen in a final series in any sport. But while the Suns took center stage, the Bulls glided into the series like a shark, silent and ready to attack. Welcome to the NBA Finals. In the case of the Chicago Bulls, it's welcome back for the third year in a row. They seek, as you know, to become only the third team to win three NBA championships in succession. Each year is a different experience. The first time you're, you're thrilled to be there because you've never been there before and everything's new. Uh, last year we were just on a mission and this year you had the chance to make history. You stay focused on that and you don't get too overwhelmed by the whole situation. And the Bulls wasted little time in putting their business-like approach to good use. Start right, bounce back, he'll Michael, he stops, fires, banker, good. Get open shots against New York like this. Playing with ruthless efficiency. Charles backs into the lane. Rejected by Scott Williams. They outmaneuvered the Suns on both ends of the court. The Bulls executing beautifully. AJ lost it on the dribble. Dumas gets it back. He picks it off by Pippen. Ahead to Jordan. Jordan on a breakaway. And there's a highlight reel as he jams it here. The Suns looking shaky here in the early going. Stolen by 
Cartwright goes up with a hook and scores. Phoenix will talk it over. Get up on top, play some defense. Let's get some steel. Well, the Suns definitely need to make a run here. Jordan spins away on Marley. He'll take it all the way to the basket and drops it in. <laughs> oh, what an explosive move. Tucker squares up, shoots off the back of the rim, and packs it with a great feed inside of Pippen for a two-handed jab. A stunned Phoenix team seemed helpless to even get into the game. And uh, the Suns right now playing Matador defense. They're kind of sitting around watching each other, expecting something to happen when they got to oh. make it happen. And the lead balloons to 20 now. Hang on! Don't play like we're afraid. They're getting whatever they want. Get them off the block. Play some Fuck defense. Oh, Push them. Man. We're playing like a bunch of whips. The Suns' finals festivities had come to an abrupt end. Now they would try to respond to their brutal wake-up call. Barkley across the timeline. Hang, top of the key, underneath the Miller for the jam! Now everybody's running the court for the Suns. The Suns have turned it up a nice Nice box that spin move by Barkley. Barkley lays it in. Phoenix cut into that sizable Chicago lead. And the crowd getting back into it. Keep your head. Keep your head. Though the Suns may have plotted their comeback, the Bulls had a plan of their own. They would counter the Suns' emotion with execution. Morris Grant back Barkley into the paint. Mike Boo spins to his right, shoots and scores. Stealing the home court advantage. Bulls not rushing their shots again, showing the patience. DJ measures a three. Come they on. would leave the Suns in disarray and bring their once high spirits crashing down around them. The Chicago Bulls take game one of this best of seven. And has stunned this city of Phoenix. But even after this decisive battle, the Bulls knew that the war was only starting. But one game don't make a series. I think, uh, you know, they have proven that, you know. Uh, so I really feel that, you know, we just take this game, pile it in with the rest, and, and go for another. We have learned an awful lot about how you have to come out. We, we've learned a lot of times the hard way. Nobody has to play out of their minds. And we don't have to have anybody have the game of their lives to beat this guy. Let's not be satisfied with the first one. Go, Go let down. Go let down. Let's Let's do down. That's Let's hard. Let's not be satisfied with the first one. Let's do this. Play hard, play tough, play smart. We don't have to be miracle men. We just have to play our games. If it's aggressive, it's good enough. Barkley top of the key, guarded by Grant. Pull up jumper, 18 footer. Good. That's the first lead for the Sun in this series. Scotty against Dumas. Dumas stripped it and stole it. Dumas to steal. The Johnson to Dumas run in and he jams. Okay, this is where the fun starts right now. That's what we're here for. The Suns opened game two on the offensive, and the Bulls found themselves back on their heels. Now let's find the rhythm. We haven't got a rhythm yet. Let's find a little bit of rhythm out there. The Bulls responded with an assurance that came from hard-won experience and from possessing one of the game's most devastating offensive weapons. Jordan comes out and gets the ball. Takes it inside with the left hand and scores. There you go. And now Michael, top of the key against Marley. Ball away, jumper. Got it. Something but that. Out to Michael Jordan. Sun's double team. Now to Jordan breaking to the hoop. A no-look pass for Grant. He drives his game. Pretty play. Marley on a drive the other way, runs on in, he missed it. The rebound, Michael, who jerks it away from everybody. Looped ahead to Paxson, to BJ running in, to Horace, he goes up and jams it. And the Bulls have hit their last eight shots on fire. And a timeout taken by Paul Westfall. Michael Jordan and the Bulls had taken over the game, but the Suns had an answer. I want the ball to go inside this time. They would look to their own superstar, and Charles Barkley would lock arms with Michael Jordan in a determined struggle for control of the contest. Now underneath, Michael fights up, scores with the left hand. Matching each of Jordan's sensational plays, Barkley kept the Suns in the game by sheer force of will. But Jordan would simply be too much. MJ hops down the lane. The left hand layup is a beauty. Oh, what a pretty play. And despite Barkley's valiant efforts, the Sun still trailed with time running out and faced the disastrous prospect of a second home loss. 
And this crowd right now sitting back a little bit on their seats. They are scared to death. The Suns may lose their second straight here. You can have a three, crack it. They're desperate. They're going to three points. Desperate, but not defeated. The Suns mounted one last run. Suns on the ball. Barkley on top. Over to Marley. Covered by George. Out to Ainge. Pop up a three. Shoes in. The Suns not going to go down easy. This is a team that's been down all night long and somehow stayed very much in it. But with deadly calm, the Bulls would simply snuff out the Suns' final gasp. Ainge goes up for a three. Tip and block the Pippen blocks with the steal. Boy, what a sensational block by Scotty Pippen. Phoenix Suns become the first team to lose games one and two at home. The Suns looking down a real dark road right now. And the Bulls are going to head back to the Windy City with two in hand and three if needed to be played at the Chicago Stadium. As the series shifted to Chicago, the Bulls' 2-0 lead seemed all but insurmountable. And their fans confidently expected to see them take the next step towards their historic goal. The Bulls have won the last two NBA championships and they're trying to three-peat. But from the start, the game didn't go according to plan. KJ starting on Michael Jordan today. As the sun showed that they would be far from cooperative. The defensive change has bothered Chicago early. He shoves a weak pass, cross court, tipped away from BJ by Dumas. He breaks away for another throw down, his third quick basket. The Suns had surprised the Bulls on defense. Now on offense, they would surprise even themselves. Squares up for a three. Yes! Oh, what a shot. Poor Marley has come to life. Chicago's dreams of history had been rudely disturbed, and now they found themselves scrambling to stay in the game. Close pass, top of the key right side now. To Oliver Miller, who has his pocket pick to the blind side by Michael. Here he comes. He flies and he jams it down. With the score tied, this game of strange twists would turn even stranger. KJ picks the ball away. There's a long lead pass to Marley. Marley jams it, no basket. Timeout was called on the break. Can you believe it? And as the clock reached its final seconds, the game was still tantalizingly up for grabs. Barkley will try to win it one-on-one -on -one on Horace Grant. In and up, rebound Chicago. Jordan calls a timeout. The Bulls will have it at midcourt. We're tied at 103. This is a barn burner. And what a ball game we have had. Pippen hole. He looks. He looks. Throws it near the basket. Grant catches Tip short. Oh! The game was headed for overtime and into basketball lore. It was incredible to watch because sometimes it seems like neither team could score, and then at one time they were just going back and forth scoring at will. So it was kind of a, you know, who was going to give first. Time running down. I mean, you kind of wondering if it's, this is one of those, uh, you know, 27 inning baseball games where you're still sitting there at three in the morning, you know, waiting for something to happen. Three and two, 10 seconds to go. For Pippen, he has the shot, gets it off, and we go to a third overtime. You get to see the pressure mounted. It's like you're calling a timeout after every play, and it's, you know, you look over at the coach and you see the coach sweating and loosening up his tie. You know, the crowd gets into it, but yet you could kind of see. You know, the energy was slowly being zapped from our guys. Scotty Pippen is down on a baseline and hasn't moved. He is definitely injured. He's got cramps in his legs. A game that was supposed to belong to them had taken a toll on the Bulls. And the suddenly hopeful Suns were eager to take advantage. Two more things. Rebound and give your body. Marley works to the left side on Pippen, takes it down the lane, changes hand to the left hand miss, got his own rebound back, and lays it in. The tired Bulls simply couldn't keep up as the Suns ran away with the game. Marley for three. Whoa! Dan Marley with a sixth three-pointer. The 
The Suns have really shown that they just will not give up. Off the Chambers, baseline jumper, off the rim, no good. Chambers missed the wide open shot, and Stacey King threw it right to Barkley, who lays it in! Oh, that might be the backbreaker! In one of the greatest games in finals history, the Suns had made a dramatic entrance into the series. In a remarkable come from behind victory, the Phoenix Suns in triple overtime have defeated the Chicago Bulls to battle their way back into the series. All right, as close as it can be right now. Ain't nobody can say an eye up for the heart. All right, hey, we're part of history, team of destiny. All we need is three more. Yeah, one. Only three. We can only right. get one on Wednesday. That's the first one. <laughs> 48 hours after their inspirational victory, the Suns were still on an emotional high. They won that triple overtime ball game. They're back in the series. They're down 2-1. They know if they can win this game, it's a dead even series, and they've got the home court advantage back. There's a feeling that the battle has been joined, that the Phoenix Suns are here as foes, not foils, that they did more than restore their pride on Sunday, that they made it a series again. And now it's the Bulls' turn to respond to a challenge. Flushed with confidence, the Suns charged into the game. On the back and hits on the drive. But this contest had become a pivotal one, and the Bulls were quick to meet the challenge. A beauty coming down the lane by Horn. Barkley on the dribble. Moves to his right, inside his aim, reverse layup, good. How about that? Long floating pass ahead to P.J. Lost the Pippen, two jams! Skying in for the right side, a great alley -oop. two on one feet. With both teams struggling to gain an advantage, Michael Jordan would break the deadlock as he scored 16 second quarter points. Drive, finger roll is good again. Michael just giving a clinic of getting to the hoop. Now the Jordan quickly by Marley, and he slams it home. Michael Jordan now looks like he is going to drive every time he gets his hand on a ball until they stop it. Let's get a stop. Every possession is important. A three wouldn't hurt my feelings either, Mark. And Marley would oblige, single-handedly carrying Phoenix back into the game. Don't give Dan Marley any room. Final seconds. Marley. Yes, and the foul. Potential four-point play. The three-pointer by Marley, and he's fouled by Jordan with seven tenths of a second. As the second half began, the Suns looked to shake loose the Bulls' grip on this critical game. Now it's heating up. This is a series now. Oh, Ainge and Jordan falling at each other. Michael, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I understand. I understand. I understand. Why are you absolutely right? Just stop it. Attacking with relentless zeal, Phoenix chipped away at Chicago's lead. Timeout taken by Phil Jackson, who doesn't like what he's watching right now. Come on, score, baby. We got to get the momentum back. We need someone to step up and score. Once again, it would be Michael Jordan who would be the difference. Jordan will drive again to the hoop. Score it. He'll have another try and a three point play. Either go foul him or foul him. Though Jordan would continue to dissect the Suns' defense, crossover ball for Jordan and finishes with the finger roll. Phoenix began to answer on offense, and Kevin Johnson able to penetrate. So the Suns come rolling back. KJ right side, Chicago by four. Here's Barkley underneath. He'll jam it. It's a two-point game as the Suns battle back. With one final push, the Suns seemed on the verge of stealing the game. But first, they would have to contend with a determined Michael Jordan. Here it goes to KJ, who fumbles the ball, and BJ steals it away. West ball said, don't let him beat you. They isolate Jordan. Ten seconds to go in the shot clock. Fifteen in the ball game. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He scores. He threw it up. Off balance and went in. Oh, my Michael with his fist split near midcourt. I tell you, he's just simply amazing. He does whatever he has to do 
to beat you. You can't uh, say enough about Michael's effort. He just doesn't want to lose. He was attacking the basket. He just kept going at the basket, going at the basket. He was unbelievable. He was unreal. He played, <laughs> played like Michael. Jordan's incredible 55-point performance had given the Bulls a 3-1 series lead and brought them within one game of completing their historic quest. An entire city sits on the edge of hysteria tonight. With the best of crowd anticipating a 3 peat for the Bulls. Michael, could you talk about the killer instinct in the playoffs over the last few years? There's no doubt about it. This is the night the Bulls are going to make it three NBA titles in a row. Is there any way this thing were to go back to Phoenix in your mind? Well, like I said, I and I got rid of all my warm clothes, so uh, I'm not going back. We're going to fake Phoenix! Oh, We're going to oh, fake Phoenix! They're not supposed to win, they're not expected to win, and the pressure is all on you. And that gives you that anticipation that you got to play not to lose. Don't do it that way. Go out there and seize it. If you went around the stadium right now, you would assume that this game has already been played and the Bulls have won it. It's been eight months, man. This is what it's all been working for, man. For all the guys who've never been here before, we want to make it happen for everybody. Two world championship banners hanging high above the rafters on the West End here. The Bulls want to make it free here tonight. This was to be the greatest game in franchise history. The Bulls and their fans were primed to celebrate their entrance into the record books. And they were ready to do it here at home in Chicago. Only one thing got in the way. Stop from behind. Dumas got a piece of it. And Dumas had finished it off. Once again, grinding with Horace. Draws the double team. Cross court to KJ. Fakes the pass. Who's in the lane? Great shot. Pass feed to Dumas. Who throws it down with a slam jam? Without warning, the Bulls found themselves ambushed by a suddenly energized Suns team. Desperation seemed to fuel the Suns' attack, and the Bulls never knew what hit them. Ball knocked loose on the floor. Barley scrambles. Throws it out back. Saved by Dumas. On pass to KJ. The Phoenix Suns are more aggressive. They are a step quicker than the Chicago Bulls on both ends of the court. Down low in the blocks on the left side. They isolate for Barkley. He spins back door. Moves. Slams it down. The Suns had gained new life, and the Bulls had lost their moment to triumph at home, and maybe to triumph at all. Barley for three. Oh, he was surprised that he had that kind of room. Kevin Johnson dribbles all the way, coast to coast, and scores. And you can put it in the bank. We're going back to Arizona. Ah, see you, Phoenix. Ah. Now we're going to the valley. Could be hot. Could be real hot. I would be lying if I said we were not disappointed because we could not accomplish the ultimate goal here in Chicago. This has to be considered one of the most disheartening losses this franchise has ever been dealt. And there will be no celebrating in Chicago tonight. It's a very, very disappointing loss for us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just really tough to swallow. We talk about keeping our eyes on the prize and being focused. Uh, and a team with two championships, you would just think they would be a lot more focused than they've shown in this series. Right? Yep. I don't understand that. The, the Chicago Bulls are in trouble. They're in trouble. Everybody better hold on. Let's go from the start. Let's, Let's do this. What time is it? The Bulls would quickly answer any questions about their focus as they began game six in Phoenix with a devastating long-range barrage. Mark Jordan from long range, that's a three! Now jump pass cross court to B.J., fires a three out of the corner and hit it with three seconds to go on the shot clock. B.J. knocks down a three from deep from the left corner there. Nice pass. You see a smart veteran Chicago team. Pippen with the shot. Oh, what a move by Scotty Pippen. The Bulls now lead by eight. Bulls need to have this one under control right now. Armstrong for three. Oh, they are on fire from downtown. They are putting on a show. The Bulls hoping to wrap the series. Why do they keep getting wide open? Once again, facing the prospect of elimination, the Suns launched yet another desperate comeback. The steal by Pippen. He's diving for it. Able to get it back. Phoenix 
Phoenix Suns are trying to come back. Chambers. Yes, Ames and the Suns not giving up. Jordan pitched it back out. Cartwright able to get back to it. Goes down. Johnson with the steal. Three on one. Bowling from Barkley. Counts. And Suns coming back at the Bulls. Out front. Pippen started to move top of the key. Through the way. Paxson broke the wrong way. And Pippen threw it right into the crowd. And well, here comes Phoenix again. Barkley back in grab. Barkley changed his mind. We will find a way to win this game. I don't care about the refs. I don't care about the fouls. If we do what we can do, to do, we will win this game. Set of defense. Bulls having difficulty locating the shot. We're down to five on the 24. We're down to three. Down to one. Absolutely incredible. The Bulls can't find the basket. It's the Bulls coming unglued now. Phoenix with a chance to take the lead. They get the Molly for a three. Got it! And the Suns play for the first time. And look. Pressure. And look. Pressure. They keep going. Another excellent defensive sequence. Three out of the 24. Two. One. And the clock ran out again. That's the third time. Oh, the Bulls playing scared almost like they don't believe that they can win. Maybe the Suns are a team of destiny. Barkley backing down. Horace Grant on the right side. Kicks it out back to KJ. Looks left, dribbles right down the lane. Puts up a runner. Scores! They're up by four. Oh, Bulls just get out quick, out hustled by the Suns. We're going to have to see if they can respond to the challenge. That's what champions do. The Suns sensing that they have the Bulls on the ropes. It's going to be seven games. This is going to be seven games. 98-94. Suns play four. They have the basketball. Out foot to Marley. Marley holds. Now to eight. Eight runs through the lane. Kicks it out back to Frank Johnson. Open for a leader. 18-footer. No. Rebound. Short. 43 seconds to go in the game. MJ pushes it the other way. Here comes Jordan all the way to the basket. Leads it up and in from coast to coast. Now it's a two-point game, 98-96. Barkley starts to back down. Barkley is double teamed out to Kevin Johnson, out to Marley. Marley eluding Jordan. Frank Johnson. Back to Frank Johnson, back to Marley. Marley, baseline jump shot, way short. Knocked and grabbed by Pippen who fell down as the clock expired. The ball's going to be Chicago ball. It's Chicago's game to win or lose. They put 14.1 seconds up. Suns lead by two. They're going to put the ball in Michael Jordan's hands. You got Michael. You keep him out of the middle. No penetration. No penetration by anybody. Michael Jordan will inbound. Tax waving for B.J. to come back. And Michael clips it in to B.J. Back to Michael. They want Michael to get a full head of steam. Try to keep him in the middle of the floor. Michael, 11 seconds. Across the timeline, it comes, goes to Pippen. Pippen breaks inside. Well, Pippen got the snap. They go to Grant. To Paxson. Paxson going for the win. Here's Paxson for three. Paxson. Yeah! 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 Hit the three. Yes! The Bulls take a one-point lead. And this round is done. John Paxson nails a three. That's the first score by anybody other than Michael Jordan in the entire fourth quarter. What? Do you believe shot. this? <laughs> Do you believe this? If they are a team of destiny, something positive will happen right here. Looking, looking, KJ. Not pass tip, grabbed by Oliver Miller. Back to KJ. Here's Johnson. Johnson gets, no, he could not get it off. Knocked away by Grant, it's all over. The Chicago Bulls have three straight NBA championships. The Bulls win the championship. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA to the world champions of basketball. It's really an elixir. You just carry it away and you can't come down. It's just like, you know, we did it, we did it. Because it's so hard to do. The Lakers couldn't do it, you know, the Pistons couldn't do it, now the Bulls have done it. And I think that would really prove the fact that, you know, we deserve you know, all the praise that we get. People that have seen this team play 
and people that know basketball are going to remember that there was a bunch of guys out there with one common goal and played together as a unit, and that was just to win championships. This is the Bulls. Third in a row, they are now the Trip Bulls. Oh, my. <laughs> Three-time NBA World Champion, Chicago Bulls. Congratulations, it's a great accomplishment. It's just something that, you know, when we retire, say, hey, those were the good days, these were the good guys, and we did it. And I think it's something that we'll be able to look back 10, 11 years from now and think how special this really was. This is a dream. What can I say? Uh, maybe we were the ones destined to win after all. It was what a great feeling. I, I can't describe what I feel. I think this was one of the greatest team ever. You can look back and say it's the Celtics back in the 60s, but to be able to do it in the 90s, it's unbelievable. I got the hard way here, It was a lot harder than anything that I've ever done before in the game of basketball. But when you become a part of it, you cherish it. We may not know what it means now. But when you know, my kids get bigger and you know, other people have their kids and we remember this day and three championships in a row, you know, that's going to bring a proud smile to anybody's face.